If you've ever wondered why a perfectly good-looking connection still runs hot or trips gear, here's the culprit. Contact resistance. A ductor test, also called a contact resistance test, measures how much a connection is choking your current. Think. Bolted lugs, cable joints, switchgear fingers, bus bar sections. Why care? As resistance creeps up from corrosion looseness, bad pressure current carrying capacity drops. That means hot spots outages fires. The ductor test is how I catch that early. What tool do I use? A ductor tester, a specialized ohmmeter built to push high current and read tiny resistances. You'll see micro-ohmmeters, milli-ohmmeters, mega-ohmmeters. But for contacts, the micro-ohmmeter is the go-to. Classic ohmmeters come in two flavors, series, shunt. In a series type, the unknown resistor sits in series with the meter and battery. Open leads read infinity. In a shunt type, it's in parallel. Low resistance pulls the pointer towards zero. Useful to know, but for real-world contact checks, I lean on the micro-ohmmeter and a Kelvin connection. Criteria time. There isn't one universal minimum resistance code. Limits vary by equipment material manufacturer's spec. I compare today's reading to the nameplate and past records and add thermal imaging to spot hot joints on bus bars. Here's my quick procedure. Step 1. Visual. I look for arcing marks, discoloration, pitting loose hardware misalignment. If it looks sketchy, I fix that first. Step 2. Instrumental. With the system safe and isolated, I use a four-wire Kelvin setup. Two leads inject current two separate leads, sense voltage right at the contact. The meter drives a controlled current, 100A, 200A, sometimes higher, then measures the voltage drop. Ohm's law does the rest. R, Hermaschens, V, I. A few pro tips. Place the voltage sense leads as close as possible to the actual contact to avoid lead resistance error. Reverse polarity to cancel thermal EMFs or let the microprocessor do it and subtract any residual offset. If a low test current gives suspiciously low readings, rerun at a higher current to break through oxide films. Keep conditions consistent and log every result next to previous baselines. Trends tell the story. What's a good outcome? Stable, low resistance that matches the manufacturer's range and your historical data. If it's drifting up, or uneven between phases, I check torque clean or replace contacts retest. Bottom line, a ductor test is a quick, data-driven health check for your power connections. Cheaper than downtime, smarter than guessing can literally prevent fires. Test it, trend it, and keep that current flowing.